for the axon what's happening they're called action potentials and I'm going to show you action potential in two different ways you may remember action potential from the muscle cell or muscle fiber let's say that the local potentials over here made the axon hillock or the trigger zone go positive enough to reach threshold maybe there was an argument but eventually it reached threshold the response to threshold if I put another voltage meter up here remember that we're only reading at one point along this axon and what I'm going to show you is over time and I forgot to write time down here this is what's happening at that one point along the axon over time if that action potential gets initiated what happens is the inside of the cell becomes positive and the outside becomes negative so that in that moment of time immediately we get a spike up to around 30 millivolts that spike is called depolarization this upswing is depolarization and then we reach a peak the positive charge here in this part of the membrane stimulates the next part of the membrane to go positive and behind it this area of the membrane that first went positive goes back to being negative on the inside and positive on the outside so almost immediately this charge of depolarization that happened comes right back down again towards threshold and that is called repolarization repolarization I apologize if you can't see my writing on this board um, after repolarization the cell goes back down to threshold or not back down, back down to resting potential and it actually goes a bit more negative than resting potential and after it goes a bit negative below resting potential it comes back up to resting potential take a quick peek and see how well you can see that you can see it decently um, I'm gonna give you two terms this region here on this curve where we went depolarization and then repolarization this is called the absolute refract refractory period by absolute refractory the term refractory means it's going to be difficult to cause this neuron to produce another action potential by saying absolute refractory period what we're saying is it's not possible to cause another action potential right now if there's already an action potential happening we can't simulate another one to happen at the same time what's interesting about that is it means that any part of the membrane at any given moment it might go positive but what you will not see is it go positive and then stay positive a flat line up here what will happen instead if it's continuously strongly stimulated is that the membrane will go positive back down positive back down positive back down back so you can have a really quick frequency of these action potentials going up and down but you can't have the axon stay positive cell body and dendrites can stay positive past threshold because they do local potentials or graded potentials instead of action potentials but where you see action potentials you could go up but you have to come back down again and then uh, it can happen over and over again but you can't have an action potential while you're having an action potential and again that's what's that's what absolute refractory period means 
for this dip over here that's just past the action potential where the cell went more negative than resting potential that's what's called the relative refractory period and it basically exists right here where the membrane became more positive than resting potential and it stops when the membrane reaches resting potential that's called the relative refractory period because it's much less likely that we'll see an action potential if there's a stimulus it has to bring the membrane a lot more positive there has to be a lot more positive happening to cause it to reach threshold because the membrane is more negative than it is at resting so you'd have to have a nice big stimulus to get an action potential to happen again so it's a relative refractory period but it's not impossible to see an action potential there so let's go back to my action potential and see what's been happening um, this area if you recall the inside went positive and outside's negative now that area of positive charge causes the next part of the membrane to go positive on the inside negative on the outside and behind it we repolarize remember we have to come back down whoops this positive area stimulates this next area to become positive on the inside and the outside becomes negative behind it we have to repolarize this positive area stimulates the next positive area or area to become positive outside negative behind it repolarize this area stimulates the next area to become positive on the inside negative on the outside and we repolarize back here and then finally we reach the axonal buton and that's stimulated and we'll talk about how that's stimulated when we talk about synaptic communication that was an action potential going down an axon and we completed its travels that's what happens at axons signals travel scream down the axon to get to the axonal buton and send a message to whatever cell is next in the chain if this was a motor neuron then a muscle cell would have been over here and we would have seen the muscle cell contract the next thing to talk about in the anatomy and physiology of the neuron is to talk about myelin and the Schwann cells 